Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to be carving a spoon. By carving, I mean whittling. So, we need to go get a wood source. Or get a piece of wood. Right, so, there's this um, little tree sapling. There we go, got it right. Uh, near the pigs. That I think will be good. Um, the reason why I'm cutting it down is because it's easier to whittle. Uh, green wood. Green wood is wood that has recently been cut off a tree and has only just died. It's still wet, basically. It's wet wood. Right. I'm gonna saw. So loud because they want food. Shush. Right, so I'm gonna cut about there, maybe, so that I can get that much decent wood because that's roughly the thickness we need. It would be better if we had wood from right at the bottom, but I'm not going to cut it right now. I'm only going to cut it there. Fair enough. Do you want the egg? Do I want it? No, my cat. Oh. No. The camera can see. There you go. So, we're just after really that piece but um this part here that can be turned into a rooster which will be another wood carving video um and then obviously if you take all these smaller twigs off of the side other than that one that one's quite good for roosters if you take all of these notchy bit off bits off you can make all sorts of spoons of different sizes and shapes and all that so we're gonna take this back over to the front of the homestead and we're gonna chop this up into a manageable size let's take this over to the front sorry about all the noise coming from the pigs by the way so loud um in a future video as well, I might attempt to make a cookser, which is a, a cup, bowl sort of thing. It's like a bowl with a handle, but you can use it for drinking. So I think cookser means, um, like, it's an old Scandinavian mug sort of thing. Something like that. Right, I'm going to cut this, stick to size, and then... We'll continue with the spoon. Right, so, one way to measure how big you want your spoon, you can hold the stick and then leave maybe two or three inches for the spoon. Okay, I'm gonna do mine there. So, let me just grab my knife quickly. Marking it where I want it. We go, a nice visible mark, and if you can see, the green in the bark means that that tree is still alive. So, it's going to be decent wood to carve with. You've also got to keep in mind how thick the bark is as well, because on some trees you can get really thick bark and you end up with just a little bit of wood. And then on others, you can have really thin bark with loads of wood, so just keep that in mind. Run through everything you need to actually do the carving. Obviously, you need a saw and you need a piece of wood. <laughs> That's like the bare basics, and also just a knife. But I have different tools as well to just help me along the way. Need 
I'm sorry, it's not laid out properly. So, what I prefer to use as well is just a pencil. You don't need a fancy mechanical pencil, you can just use a normal one. Um, your Whitlin knives. This was about, I think it was £30 on Amazon uh, UK, so around 60 lev. If you're in Bulgaria, my everyday knife that I use for anything that needs cutting. <laughs> um, and then this is a part of this entire set. So this is a chisel set. These are just mini hand chisels. I usually use these curved ones like that if you can see um, I use them to actually scoop the spoon part out of the spoon <laughs> if you know what I mean um, you can also use these for engraving on your spoons as well if you want I'm not sure what wood this actually is um, I don't know. I carved a spoon uh, before this video. It's uh, been carved with really old wood because I used some firewood. Uh, and that was really tough to get through. So I'm hoping this will be easier because it's green. And also, I'm just hoping it's... Uh, softer wood in general so that was that and then obviously safety it's number one priority okay now I prefer not to use gloves but for this video because YouTube might be funny about it I I will wear gloves and it's quite cold today so should help my hands out a little bit but yeah I don't pref I don't really like using gloves but obviously if you don't want to cut your hand it's a good thing to wear them so the first thing we're gonna do with this is we're gonna remove all the bark just with your everyday knife just take all of the bark off so I've seen loads of people on YouTube do it different ways. You can either keep your hand still like that and move the wood backwards or you can push the knife away from you. I just really do what I feel comfortable with because if you're carving something and you're not comfortable with it, you're going to end up cutting yourself. So, just do it any way that feels best to you. So, this part really doesn't need to be neat at all. We're literally just barking the stick Ow. punch the table um, that's done a barked stick right so now, you can use your um, pencil to mark out how you want the spoon to look. And then you can take any material that you want off of it to make it look like how you want it to look. Right, so basically all I'm doing here is making it into the rough shape of a spoon. 
uh, just copying what I drew onto the wood. Um, and now we're going to carry on with the rest of the spoon right now. So, now, before I get to carve in the uh, actual bowl bit of the spoon, I'm calling it a bowl, but it's actually the spoon bit of the spoon. I'm just going to mark how deep the bowl of the spoon is going to be and how thin this part of the handle is. So, what I prefer to carve is just full-size handles like this. But I'm going to try something new and if it fails on camera then it I'll start again. <laughs> so simple it is. Right. So I'm gonna mark about there and it'll be about a centimeter. Maybe maybe a centimeter and a half. I'm not sure. And then I'll get it to go a little bit thicker at the back. I'll make this a very outline so you guys can see. There we go. And then obviously that goes under there. So that's the handle. It's thin and then it gets thicker again. So it's like ergonomic. <laughs> um I know the handle's quite big. I'm only taking about two millimeters off the end but there, there you go you can see i'm only taking about two millimeters off the end but you know that will have to do right so i've seen loads of people do it with an axe and people that i've been talking to have said it's better for you to have one-on-one -on -one training because you also need to understand the dogs in the background Wolf, get down. Sorry. Um, it's better to have like one on one axe safety sort of thing, talk thing, before you use an axe. So I'm just gonna use a hammer with my knife to take most of it off. And then I'll use this to roughly do it, and then I'll um, get the detailing-ish with this knife. And then I will use my detail knife to completely finish the handle. The handle is the first thing I like to actually complete, because at least that way, whilst you're carving the spoon, you have something to hold. So... You could then carve the spoon right now like this. So, what I'm going to do now is just flatten the top, all of the top here. Take a, a literally only about two to three millimeters off, roughly. Okay, I'm not measuring it, but we're going to take roughly. So, we're going to take roughly where I've put that line there. I'm going to take about that much off so that this part of the spoon is nice and flat and it's not like rounded. You can also actually get an angled piece and like if you've got a really angled piece you can make a ladle out of it. There you go, I'll hold it like that. You can make a ladle out of it so obviously you have a bit of wood there as well. And you can make a big old spoon. Or you can get a piece of bent wood just like that. Like sort of like a crescent moon shape. And you can actually um, carve it sort of like that as well. So you can carve a spoon like that as well. So I'm going to go over to where we make the pig food because that's where the hammer is um and this table is quite loud when you bang on it so i'm gonna take this and you guys and my knife 
over to where the hammer is so that we can then take most of the material over here off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this like this on here, okay, I'm going to flip this around so I can see the drawing, I'm sorry, um, but I need to see it. <laughs> I'm gonna not go straight. Let me just move that. There we go. Just in case I need to move swiftly. I don't know what I'm gonna move swiftly from. I'm not gonna move very swiftly either, but. So, I'm going to split this until I can't split any further, otherwise it'll go into the thingy. So now, placing my knife there, I'll go there actually, and hammer my knife into there, like that. The only problem with this is the knife keeps tilting and I need it to stay in the centre. There we go. So, we've now got this. <laughs> so this is obviously just the basic shape. And then, obviously, we'll make it into the design that's been drawn onto here that you now can't see because I was struggling with it. But, that's it. And then, that bit can just... Oh, that bit can just be used either for firewood or anything really, another carving, but I'm just going to chuck it over there with all the rest of the firewood and I'll see you back at the table. Oh, now we're back at the table. Now I'm going to shape the handle to the to the way I want it shaped with my rough end knife. Um, I think that's the name of this knife. So let's move that and that. Right, I'm just gonna try and get as much of this material off as I can. So that I can have a fancy handle. So, what I'm doing is I'm just finishing the handle off completely. This took me about 40 minutes in total, roughly maybe not even that long um but yeah uh now let's move on to the next bit we've got the basic shape of the handle pretty much nailed okay this is my first time making a handle like this and it's actually came out almost exactly how i wanted it so i'm quite proud of this because I usually just make boring handles. <laughs> right, so now I'm going to need to shape the bottom of this and obviously do the cup on there and then we'll sand it, make sure everything's all nice uh, and smooth and then we'll put sunflower oil on it which will bring the grain out. 
So, yeah. I also just wanted to have a tea break and talk about a new account that we're going to be opening up. So, I was just talking to my mum and she was like, why don't you open up a TikTok account? Um, because you can get people from there as well. Uh, you might get a little bit of a bigger following. So I was like, yeah, why not? So, after this video gets published, I'm not sure when, I don't know if it's going to be today, or tomorrow, or, you know, whenever, but it's more than likely going to be today or tomorrow, okay, if you watch it either today or tomorrow, then you'll know about it, <laughs> but if you're watching it after, then you know that we have a TikTok account that you can also go uh, follow because it, it helps us out a bunch because we want to expand our channel and I do know I do know that it's not going to happen overnight I'll keep it open because I mean it might be some behind the scenes stuff that goes up I, I, I honestly don't know I'm also going to show you something that I want to put in a future video um, because I think if you're into this sort of carving stuff the first thing you want to start it with is probably carving a chicken right so what I was talking about was uh, these so oh he's got a bit of fluff on him so this is the little cockerel I made uh, this was one of the first things I ever carved um, it's just a little wooden cockerel on a little base I also made a hen which is even easier than the cockerel um, what I like about these is that everyone you make is different because you can't carve a cockerel exactly the same um, because it's just got so many small details like the beak and the, the comb and stuff like that but uh yeah that's the hen I made also made a little chick which took me about literally like two minutes to make uh, he's on his own little base as well Right, okay, so I've got the basic shape of the spoon done. I know this part of the spoon looks very, very weird at the moment. It looks like honeycomb. Um, and the inside has been scooped out. Uh, I cut myself. That's why I stopped filming the rest. <laughs> I'm fine now. Um, that's why you wear gloves. Um, but anyways, so... This spoon is now basically complete. If you don't have any sandpaper, it's done. You just need to put a bit of oil on it. But just to clean it up a little bit, I prefer to sand it. So I use two different sandpapers. I use uh, 100 grit and then I use 120 grit. I know that's not a big, um, a big difference, but... I just prefer to use two because I find it just tidies it up, it look, makes it look tidy, uh, uh, relatively, relatively nicely. So 
I'm going to go grab the sandpaper, I'll be back in just a sec. I've got the sandpaper, I've used both of these sandpapers on multiple spoons already. Um, but yeah, let's get on to sanding. So I prefer to use the 100 and then after I finish with the 100, I then go in with the 120. So I'll see you in a bit once it's all done. Um, because this usually takes quite a quite a, a while to get it nice. Right, that's the 100 done. Now I'm going to go in with the 120. Right, so after sanding, this is what it will look like. Okay, it looks alright at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if you could eat off of it just like this. Um, so, I put oil on it. And put sunflower oil on it as well. Before I put um, oil on it, I just wanted to show you real quick. This was the first spoon I ever made, but this was just from um, an already cut out shape. Um, and look, the thick handles. This was another one I made today. Um, and this took me about two hours. Um, and that's got oil on as well. Now I'm just going to oil this up quick. So I've just put oil on this and because it's quite a light wood it hasn't actually brought out the grain that much but it seems to work better um, after about an hour um, either just sat in the sun or just sat indoors. So that will now just sit for about at least an hour to three hours. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry I didn't burn it, but my wood burner takes ages to heat up. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao for now. Oh, wait, do it, 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 do it,